Hello everybody, Ben Woodruff here with another falconer video. Today's video I'm talking about a really unique species and that is the New Zealand falcon. The New Zealand falcon is very strange, it's very unique and uh, kind of surprisingly it's a member of the hobby falcon family. Now among all the falcons there's different kind of subgroups, right? Like there's different kestrels and there's hobbies and then there's the hiero falcons which is like your your lanner falcon, your saker falcon, your jeer falcon, and your lugger falcon. They're, they're different groups. Well this falcon, the New Zealand falcon, is actually a member of the hobby falcon family. And being part of that clade, it doesn't uh, seem it at first, but the, this video is going to dive into it and talk more about that. Now the video you're about to see is actually cut out from a clip from a much longer video I made covering all the different species of hobbies. Uh, but I just thought I'd also make an individual video just on New Zealand falcons in case that's what people are looking for online. If you want to see the whole video, go ahead and look down in the description. There'll be a link to the whole long form video about all the hobbies. But I hope you enjoyed this video learning about New Zealand falcons. All right, the next bird we're going to talk about is the New Zealand Falcon. Now, if you're watching just the video that I'm making on New Zealand Falcons, cool. If you're watching the long form video where I'm going through all the members of the hobby lineage, now is when it starts to get weird. Everything I've talked about so far, the different members of the hobby lineage, it's like, okay, you can kind of see they're related. But now it's gonna start to get weird. New Zealand Falcons uh, form a sister clade. They form a sister clade with themselves and with Oplomato falcons of the New World, which we'll get to next, and with Australian brown falcons. These are weirdos. They're weird, and they're very close related. They are a branch off of the hobby lineage. You could call them hobbies if you wanted to, but these guys are weird, very strange. So let's go into the New Zealand falcon itself. The New Zealand falcon itself lives, of course, throughout New Zealand, as the name suggests. Um, and again, genetics have shown that the closest relative of this bird is the Oplomato falcon, which is very strange because if you think of where New Zealand is and you think of where Oplomato falcons live, you know, from Mexico all the way on through South America, those are kind of odd separated parts of the world, but genetic genes don't lie. When we do genetic tests, genes don't lie. They always give us some direct answers. Um, this is a large member of the hobby lineage. This bird weighs from 300 to 500 grams. And as with all falcons, of course, the, the males are smaller and the females are larger. Uh, we see with this, with the New Zealand falcon and with the next two, also with the Oppomatos and the brown falcons, that they love to stay with their mate. They love to hang out with their mate year round, not just in the breeding season. Most other falcons, when it's not breeding season, they ditch out their mate and then you're just every man for himself. And then you come back together, you might mate for life. And if your mate's still alive when you come back, you, you start up a family again the next year. Not these guys. These guys stay together year round and they hunt together as a pair. And New Zealand is a strange place. New Zealand is very strange because it was ruled by birds and nothing but birds. There are mammals there now. Humans have brought mammals and introduced them. But for most all of New Zealand's history, the only mammals you have, I mean, there's some oceanic mammals like seals and stuff on the coast. And there's some species of bats in Australia that are almost entirely flightless. They go around on the ground hunting beetles and they'll just perch hanging to, they can barely fly, they can flutter a little because they don't have predators. And so it's just an easy way for them to hunt. Oh, well, New Zealand falcons will hunt those bats, but that's not the point. The point is the normal aerial predators weren't really there. There's not many raptors in New Zealand. There's a type of harrier called a swamp harrier. There is a, a species of owl. And there used to be the biggest eagle that ever lived, the Haas eagle. That's a comparatively recent extinction. Uh, and the New Zealand falcon. And that's pretty much it. So this bird had the opportunity to kind of dominate a bunch of hunting roles. Same thing with the, with the swamp harrier. The swamp harrier of New Zealand acts much more like a, like a hawk than a harrier. It is much more of an aggressive hunter and has even been successfully used in falconry. Because again, uh, there is no waste in nature. So if you have opportunities being unfulfilled, animals start to change their behavior to adapt to take advantage of those kind of resources. And the New Zealand falcon, 
For coming from the hobby lineage, it is a pretty tough, you know, versatile bird. And uh, it, it can chase just about anything. So it hunts both native and non-native birds. There's been a, a lot of birds introduced, but it will also hunt uh, a wide range of non-avian prey. It'll hunt uh, hares and rabbits, which have been introduced, uh, lizards, beetles, dragonflies, and oddly, it has been documented that this has hunted a type of penguin. Penguins! There's a penguin called a little blue penguin, and a little blue penguin weighs 975 grams. So that's like the weight of a male red-tailed hawk. So to have this three to 500 gram New Zealand falcon tackling prey that big, that's pretty impressive. So these birds will go after whatever they want. They, it's, the, it's their territory now. They're, they're the king of the world, uh, especially with the hot seagulls gone. They fill so many ecological roles. They're weird looking. They're cool looking. The first year birds are kind of modeled. And um, I'm an artist, so I'm always looking at pigments. And I always try to describe to people that there are pigments that you don't always see properly. Like you might say, oh, this is, this is red, where actually there's some blue reflecting back at you. The New Zealand falcon is freaking green. You look at it, it's not, but start looking through enough pictures and you'll start to see green hues reflecting back at you. There's the actual colors and then there's some reflected colors. And once you see it, you'll notice that you're like, oh yeah, I'm kind of getting some green reflection back. A lot of birds in, in New Zealand are green, but that's, you'll, you'll see it. So first year New Zealand falcons, they're, they're deeper, they're darker, they're, they're, they're more subtle. Um, and then once they get adult colors, they have more of that typical hobby falcon coloration or patterning. And, and again, if you look at your Asian hobbies and you see your Asian hobby and you see, okay, your Asian hobby adult has that streaking on the chest and the red flanks and the red under the rump feathers. And you, you can see that, oh yeah, you can see this is just a deeper, thicker, richer, more robust version. Every, every... Every band is thicker, every stripe is thicker, the red is deeper, but it's all the same. So you can see this is just a giant hobby and it probably uh, came from Eurasian hobbies directly, we, we don't know. Um, but again, its closest living relative is the Aplomato falcon. I think these are really cool birds in falconry. Um, I've, I've talked with falconers who have worked with them, captive bred New Zealand falcons, and apparently they're kind of a pain to work with. Uh, you have to get the, the weight management just right and they're kind of cantankerous and, and it's like, oh, huh, well, their closest living relative is an Aplomato. And when you hear all the good and the bad of an Aplomato, it lines up the same with the New Zealand Falcon. They, 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 they're very similar in those ways. So uh, New Zealand Falcons, really cool birds, very beautiful birds, very unique birds where they have just carved out. They've, mm, them and black, uh, brown Falcons, which I'll, I'll get to in a bit, they have kind of taken over and tackled so much more, so much more. Um, and they fill in different roles. So in other words, if you're looking at a bird, you're looking at its size, its shape, and you might be like, okay, yeah, it's a standard falcon, but there's subtle differences. The density of certain bones, the length of certain toe bones, the width of their eyes, certain things that are different because this is a bird that is adapted for New Zealand when nobody else was fighting them for the territory. Other than swamp harriers, they had it all. And they have done great filling every single role. And again, uh, to show how adaptable they are, like it's only what a few hundred years that mammals have been there, and they're like, oh, you got rabbits, you got hares, okay, we're gonna tackle them, and they go after them. That's pretty amazing. Uh, they'll just jump onto a new prey source like that that quick that they've never seen before. Again, New Zealand falcons, who knows how many millions of years they've been there? Who knows? But they didn't have mammals there, and now you know within a couple hundred years. Mammals, okay, we'll hunt them. So New Zealand falcons, highly adaptable, highly su successful, not the most agreeable bird to work with for falconry, but a lot of fun. From everybody I talked to, they're a lot of fun to fly and a lot of train and to work with. So uh, really an exciting bird. I've never worked with one myself, but I hope I get to someday because they are one of the coolest falcons on earth.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, New Zealand falcons are a fascinating species, and everybody I talked to who's ever flown them or worked with them says they're one of a kind. Really unique, very beautiful, and a uh, very uh, diverse species able to handle and tackle a wide range of odd prey in New Zealand and really having mastered that environment. So I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about them. Uh, if you haven't already, if you could hit subscribe, I very much appreciate it. It does help me keep this channel up and going. And as always, happy hawking. Thank you.